Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start Tutorial. I'm Laura from the BusyBeePost.com and in today's tutorial I will show you how to create a simple invoice in GNU Cash. I will walk you through the anatomy of a simple bare bones invoice. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful please subscribe to show your support for this channel and don't forget to give a thumbs up. Let's begin. GNU Cash has an integrated accounts receivable system you can use to create a basic invoice quickly and easily that you can use as a sales receipt for purchases paid in full. Or you can create accounts receivable invoices for customers you sell to on credit. The difference is to create accounts receivable invoices in GNU Cash for customers you sell to on credit is much more detailed. In this GNU Cash Quick Start tutorial, I will walk you through the anatomy of a very basic invoice, focusing only on the simple features needed to produce a customer sales receipt for transactions paid in full at time of purchase. Let's begin. We will start by entering your company's information in the system that you want to appear on the invoices. To do that, select File from the menu bar. And when the menu opens, select Properties. Here on the Book Options screen, select the Business tab. The information you enter here is pretty much self-explanatory. Fill in any company information you want to display on the invoice. Now if you would like to change the invoice's starting number, we can do that now while still on the book option screen. By selecting apply, this way it will update the changes but leave the dialog box open. Now select counters. Scroll down to the invoice row and enter the number before the number you want the invoice numbers to start at. For example, the default starting number is zero, meaning the first invoice you create will start with the number one. If I want the invoices I create to begin starting at the number 101, I would enter 100 here. Since 100 is the number before 101. When finished, select OK to save the changes and close the book option screen. Here is an example of the company information as displayed on the invoice. Next, we need to set up the customer's profile for each customer you want to create an invoice for. Begin by selecting Business on the menu bar, then Customer then New Customer on the New Customer screen. The customer number is the number by which you want to refer to this customer. You can leave it blank and the system will generate a number for you in numerical order starting with the number 1. Next enter the company name. This is a required field. If left blank the system will display an error message. Under the billing address, the billing name is optional. You can enter an additional name here or you can simply leave it blank if you choose to do so. The customer address field is a required field. If you leave it blank, again the system will generate an error. But the funny thing here is it doesn't matter if you enter a partial address or a full address as long as you enter an address in the address field in at least one of the lines in the address field text box. Below you can enter the customer's phone fax, email, and any additional information or comments you would like to include about the customer. You can enter in the notes field. All these fields are optional. 
The data you enter here is for your eyes only. Next, select the Shipping Address tab. Here you can enter address information for your reference only. If you want the customer shipping address to appear on the invoices, you will have to enter it under the customer's billing address. Any data you enter here in the billing address text boxes will appear on the invoice. When finished, click on the OK tab to save the changes and close out. Here is an example of the customer's information as displayed on the invoice. Once you have the customer's data in the system, you can create as many invoices as you like for that particular customer by selecting Business on the menu bar. And when the menu opens, select Customer, then New Invoice. Here on the New Invoice dialog box, Invoice Type should be selected by default if not selected. The Invoice ID number is optional. This is your internal number for this invoice. You can leave it blank and an invoice number will be generated automatically for you starting with the number 1. Unless you change the invoice starting number on the book option screen under counters. And in that case it will start with the number you entered. Date opened. By default the present date is displayed. This is the date used as the date you are entering the invoice in the system. This is not the date that will appear on the invoice. If you need to change the date, you can do so by clicking on the drop down arrow to open up the calendar you can use to change the date. Under Billing Information, enter the customer's name. Start by typing the first few letters of the customer's name you entered in the company field text box when you created the customer's profile. And GNU Cash will try to auto complete it for you by displaying a list of possible matches. Simply select the customer's name you're searching for by clicking on it and it will be automatically entered in the text box. In most cases, entering the first few letters of the customer name is all that is needed here. If not, you can click on the Select tab to open up the GNU Cash Find tool that you can use to search for and select the customer. By default, the notes field will only display on the invoice if you enable that option. For example, I will enter a message I want to display on the invoice, a promotional advertisement. Mark your calendar, December is free shipping month. Next, I will select OK to save the changes. On the Edit Invoice screen that opens, you can see the invoice ID number. And here you have the opened invoice date. And in the Notes field, any notes you entered can be seen here. Here I see the note I entered. I can also edit this note here if I wanted to. Keep in mind, this message is for this particular invoice and customer only. Below is where you can enter an itemized list of goods and or services you sold to the customer. You will notice the layout is similar to the typical GNU Cash account register. And entering data is basically the same. In the date field, you can enter the invoice date. By default, the present date is displayed. You can change it by clicking on the drop down arrow and using the calendar to change the date. In the description field, you can enter a description of the item or service. I will enter the purse handles I sold. Action is a user defined field. This is an optional field. You can leave it blank or you can enter your cost information or select one of the predefined options by clicking inside the text box and making a selection. I will enter each. In the income account column, select the income account from the chart of accounts that applies to this sale. 
I will select income sales. In the quantity field, enter the amount you sold. I sold about 25. In a unit price field, enter the cost, $3.99 each. Next, scroll over to the subtotal, and here you can see the amount of the invoice. Here's an example of what the invoice looks like so far. So far, we completed entry of the invoice number, the invoice date, and the details of the invoice. But it's not official yet until we post it. Posting the invoice saves the invoice in the system. If you don't post it, you will lose it. To post the invoice, select Post on the toolbar. If you don't see the post on the toolbar, you can select the drop down arrow to reveal the hidden options and then select Post. When the dialog box appears, select Yes. You would like to save it. Post date is the date you posted the invoice to your records. Due date is the date the payment is due. These are the dates that will appear on the top of the invoice. You can enter a description if you like. And post to account should be accounts receivables. If not, select it. And select OK to finish up. Here is an example of the part post adds to the invoice. You now have the date of the invoice and the course details. Now that you have your post details, the invoice is official but not yet complete. The final step is to process the payment. To begin processing the payment, select pay on the toolbar. And once again, if you don't see the pay icon, click on the drop down arrow When the process payment window opens, you will see all the necessary information has been filled in for you. All you need to do at this point is to verify the information is correct by looking it over, including the date of the payment and the amount of the payment. The most important thing you need to do here is to select the transfer account the money will be or has been entered into, for example, the business checking account. Once you select a transfer account, the system remembers the account you previously selected and it will default to the account each time you process new invoices. When finished, select OK. Here is an example of the part process payment adds to the completion of the invoice. Here is the transaction payment date and the payment details with a thank you. Now that you have a completed invoice, we can print the invoice by selecting the print invoice option on the toolbar. Here you have a preview of the completed invoice. And you'll notice the new date is added to the invoice. This is the print date, which will display the present date each time you print an invoice so far, we created a basic invoice in GNU Cash that can be used as a customer sales receipt for products or services paid in full. And if you like, you can even change the title of the invoice to sales receipt. No matter what you want to refer to the invoice as, the title can be changed by selecting the Options tab on the toolbar. And when the window opens, select the General tab. Then scroll down to custom title. Here I will enter sales receipt. And I will select apply to apply the changes but keep the window open. Since I would like to make another change here. If you remember earlier in the tutorial I added a note in the invoice note field. And I talked about having a choice of keeping it hidden or displaying the note on the invoice. Here you can select 
the display tab and scroll down to invoice notes and select it to enable that option. Now I will select OK to finish up and close out. Here I have an example of the changes I made to this particular invoice. Customer sales receipt is displayed instead of invoice and you can see also that the invoice number is 101. Remember I changed that in the counters tab and here is the message I entered in the note field, the invoice note field. Mark your calendar, December is free shipping month. Now to print a hard copy of the invoice, select the print icon on the toolbar. Or we can save the invoice to a PDF file by selecting the Make PDF icon and then select where you want the file to be saved. Here is an example of what a PDF printout of the invoice looks like. And that's it. That concludes this tutorial on creating a simple invoice in GNU Cache. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you in the next video.